You're listening to Radio Sri Lanka. Very good morning to you. It's precisely 7.15. It's the coffee hour and you've been in good company with Dilshan, giving you the best in music from 5 a.m. And right now it's time for us to sip our coffees. Probably we've already had your coffee, but nevertheless, we are here to give you some good entertainment and we have a very entertaining personality with us in the studios joining us today is the talented musician and lead vocalist of the renowned Gypsies band of Sri Lanka, Pial Pereira. Uh, and also with their iconic fusion of Sri Lankan folk, pop and dance music, the Gypsies have captivated audiences for decades. And we are actually privileged to have you here with us, uh, Pial Pereira. And uh, your stage persons have certainly made you a beloved figure in the music industry in Sri Lanka, I'd say. So, a very good morning to you. Welcome to the Coffee Hour. Good morning, good morning. And how's everything at your end? Uh, not too bad. <laughs> I was quite busy the last week, actually. Uh, I was in uh, Tanamalu in the jungles uh, two days back. Wow. We are doing a remake of the Ojai song. I was about to ask, why yeah. Tanamalu? So it makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> so Ojai yeah, means, uh, I mean, Arjun, he's a very popular singer. I mean, in, in, in India and UK, he has done a lot of uh, songs. and he has done a lot of covers. Covers right? also, yeah. And he has done, he has his own original mm. songs. It's, it's also very popular. So Tanamal, there's a beautiful place, nice jungle. So we were in there to this back, and uh, I think that song is coming. He he rearranged the whole song. Arjun rearranged the whole song again, wow. and uh, so there are some English words as well. So uh, so it's coming out well. So we were there from five o'clock in the morning. We started. It went on till about one o'clock in the morning next day. Wow, that's quite long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we're going back in time uh, and uh, let's talk a little bit about how the Gypsies band came into existence and what inspired its unique fusion of music genres. Yeah, what uh, Gypsies started off in actually in 1969 with, uh, uh, we had three cousins, cousins one, uh, two cousin brothers and one cousin sister, uh, namely Neville, Noel and Kanti. And I was not in the band at that time, I was too small, I was about 11 years or something like that. So in 1975, three of them one by one left, and uh, when Neville left, my father asked me to join the band. I was sitting for my O levels at that time. Mm. He said, "You are not doing anything. I mean, you are not studying well enough." So <laughs> that's scrap, not going the way yeah, he yeah, wanted scrap, to go. Yeah, scrap the O levels and come and join the band. So then I joined the band in 1975. So uh, from that time, at that time we were doing only English music. Mm -hmm. We were not doing singular music. So that's the time uh, we thought uh, we were quite beginning in Colombo with English music. I mean, we were playing for most of the dancers and uh, weddings and all that. We were very popular in Colombo. But then to see, so then we thought we must go out of Colombo, how to reach that. Then only we thought like... The like masses, you mean? Masses, yeah. Mm. yeah. So like Clarence with your other Moonstones, and they were very popular, Milton and Malarachi. Then we also started doing some singular songs. That's how we got on to singular music. And we first singular song was uh, Linda Langa Sangamaya and Amma Amma Me Mata. So we did those two songs. And uh, then from the, then on, None uh, Magistu the None and all these things came. Uh, we always uh, wanted to keep uh, humor in most of our songs, and uh, because uh, everybody was singing love songs at that time, Milka Break Malaga, up yeah, songs, yeah, love, yeah, songs. Yeah, love songs. Mm -hmm. So we thought we, we just, even Sunil sang few love songs at the beginning. Obadu to Mulvine is very popular today, but at that time it didn't get popular. And Matayati uh, Kandulai. But uh, then we, we were not getting anywhere with, the, with those songs. We were not getting popular. Then we thought we must do something different to what other people are doing in Singhala. Then only we came up with uh, None Magasudu None, Kurumito and Lunu Dehi and all these uh, uh, different kind of songs. And from there onwards we went to political songs. Also, you see Nyore, uh, I Don't Know Why, Lankawe and all those uh, songs we did uh, uh, because uh, uh, the main uh, thing Gypsies had dif uh, different to other people was our themes of songs. We had different themes of songs, Ojai and all that. Always there was a theme for the song to uh, carry out that song on stage or whatever. It's like a conceptual yeah, one. Con yeah, that's right. So uh, not the usual love song or whatever. We did those also, but our main... Uh, 
hits and hits and mainly we were always concentrating on doing something different exactly and yeah. that's uh, what has taken your places i'd yeah, say that's right yeah yeah so we've got one of uh, your songs lined up right now yeah, so yeah. this is you're the best and you really wanted yeah, me to select I wanted this, this <laughs> because this is this is uh, the first english song i wrote actually wow. i wrote this in 1988 and uh, i like this song and this is sung by nimal pereira who was the drummer with us at that time uh, this is 1988 recording of uh, my first english song and what inspired you to write this you're the best any any personal experience yeah, or personal, uh, there is a personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know actually i had a girlfriend at that time oh, yeah. so we broke uh, she we broke off for a little while it was like that she, I mean, she broke off from me <laughs> so i was calling her and, and this nothing happening then she said you must write a song for me then only i will talk to you again <laughs> it did it work Yeah, that's how you do it. So it that's works. how I wrote this song. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> The best, the best for me. 
you're the best and the song which worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It uh, gave results. <laughs> gave results. And uh, maybe f- it gave results to you and to the band as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, let's let's also talk a little bit about your most memorable performance or the music, musical moments with yeah. the Gypsies because it's been there for a very long time yeah. and you all have had many stage appearances. Yeah, we did. I mean, when you look back, I mean, we started in 1969 70 but the band really got got off got going in 73s that time that's the time i thought i told you we were playing for most of the dancers in sri lanka till 75 77 uh, till about 80 we were doing a lot of english covers and all that uh, but uh, we have been playing so many concerts even those days Navaranga Hala was like every weekend it was Navaranga Hala and uh, every weekend there was a concert so like that we have been we have traveled to so many countries and Sri Lanka also it's very hard to say which concert uh, uh, is the major best concert but to me uh, the first I don't know why concert we had at uh, BMICH First, I don't know. After we released, I don't know why CD. Uh, in March uh, 2005, I think. 2005, we had the first I don't know why concert. Uh, there was a lot of planning and everything in that concert. And everything went off perfectly. And everybody who came, the people were like stunned with the whole concert. It was like that. So people, a lot of good comments. We we started uh, the concert saying that we are doing only one one-off concert. This is it. We are not going to do any more concerts because Sunil didn't want to do any concerts at that time. But we started in March. By December, we did 10 concerts mm-hmm. and all 10 concerts were houseful at BMICH. Uh, we, within nine months, we did 10 concerts. So that was uh, that. But well, the first concert was the best, I think. Other than that, we played at, uh, what, seven years back, I think, seven or eight years back. We played at Smithsonian uh, University in USA. They invited us to play there. Actually, uh, uh, more than anything, they wanted Sunil to come and give a lecture on uh, baila music. So, we, Sunil actually, we played only one day there. Uh, outside the university, you know, there's an area that you can play. Uh, we, we had the whole concert outside there. But then Sunil had to do a lecture about Sri Lanka baila music. Uh, he had to go to the university about three days and lecture about baila music and all that. So that concert at Smithsonian is also a very unique thing, I thought. But we have never played in an institution like that. We have always, have always been uh, big, massive concerts and all that. But this was also quite unique, I, I thought. I mean, yes, throughout your career, you've performed many a times, yeah, yeah. but it's it's difficult to pick and choose yeah, a single memorable difficult. moment. Yeah, but yeah. still, there are, you know, concerts which really yeah. speaks to your heart as well yeah, sometimes, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So how do you navigate the balance between preserving Sri Lankan folk music traditions and also you incorporate uh, contemporary elements in your compositions as well? So how do you do that? Yeah, the thing is, uh, the Sri Lankan uh, uh, thing, it comes naturally, I think. Uh, it, it's a natural thing. That it's, in the blood. Blood. it's in the blood. It's in the blood, yeah. So, but uh, we, in, we come, I mean... We bring in the Western touch also into it. So that's a, that's a success story of the gypsies, I think, because with the Sri Lankan thing, but we have all the other Western uh, side also in our songs. Uh, and as I said, uh, it's, it's mainly because every, most of the, song, I mean, not, I don't say every song, but most of the main songs always has a story. And that story is unique to Sri Lanka. Some of them are very controversial political stories. Uh, if it's not political, even uh, there are like Ojai and all that. Also, there's there's a concept. There's a, there are stories. Lunu Dehi, all those songs. Also, most of the songs has uh, a concept. So I think that's the reason people uh, liked uh, the Gypsies mainly because we were doing different kind of music. Exactly, and. Uh as you mentioned, everything has a story and also uh, the music video is also very appealing yeah, yeah, most yeah. of the time. Yeah, the thing is, uh, I believe Sunil, Sunil is a good singer, I don't, everybody knows well, but I think he's a better actor. Wow, okay. Yeah, what about a, you? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, very, I'm really bad in acting. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the first time I did a bit of a main role in uh, 
acting with this Ojai thing with Arjun. So Arjun, it, Arjun kind of tapped your uh, <laughs> capabilities. <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> so it was really hard for me. Actually, <laughs> and then, and then I said, I am a singer, not an actor. <laughs> we need but to get Sunil, Arjun course, it, comes, it comes naturally. Sunil, Sunil just, uh, I mean, he can. That was the biggest advantage to the band. Because he carried these songs. All the, I mean, if there's nobody to carry these songs, not only on stage, on, his, on all the videos and everything, he carried these songs uh, beautifully. So, I mean, with the, all the service of the acting like a minister, acting different, different roles, he carried these songs, uh, I mean, really well. That's the main biggest advantage we had. Exactly. And uh, speaking of interesting concepts as well, uh, you mentioned that each one has a little bit of humor yeah. and then again, you know, coming up with a storyline yeah. and a concept. It's not easy to do everything yeah. because it requires a lot of time, yeah, that's it requires right, yeah. a lot of thinking and it's yeah. not just one person involved. Yeah, yeah, there are so yeah. many people and everybody yeah. has to agree with whatever yeah, is yeah, happening, yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. So how long does it take generally? It, it all depends. Now, there are some songs... Uh, if I look at this song, uh, we released a song called Galupara uh, after Sunil passed away uh, last December. Uh, so that song actually uh, we wrote for about six months. You know, today we write, then next day we think, no, no, this uh, this area is not right. Then we call the lyric writer again. We say, now this is what we want here. Try to get this. Then okay, we, then we stop there. Some days it, nothing comes up. Uh, generally, these all these lyric writers want a small drink also in the night and they are writing not a small drink. So <laughs> time to drink and nothing happens. We ask him to come the next day. Like this, this Kalupara took about six months to complete. Wow, uh, complete, that's a uh, very long time. The lyrics. So, I mean, it was not writing every day, but from time to time, we were calling him and writing. Then the music track also took a long time because we wanted a different sound in this song. And we used uh, this Nadro. Uh, Rakita so, uh, drummers, the, I mean, they are very popular. They, they, I mean, they have been all over the world. So uh, we uh, got them to join this song to get a different sound. We always want to try different things. So then uh, they also joined, and the recording also took quite a long time. But the video also we were planning to do with Sunil, but unfortunately we couldn't finish that. That's why we did in you know, a cartoon video with him so uh, that's one song that took a long time like that even some songs have been long like that some songs like Lanka and all that it just happened within a day it happens right like yeah, when yeah. you when you get inspired yeah, by something yeah. and you suddenly so some, we are recording this album I don't know album we wanted 14 songs we finished the 14 songs also then suddenly when I was about to send the master to <coughs> The, produ- the producer, when I was about to send the master to the producer, Sunil come in the morning, Sunil said, I said, I'm sending this master. Said, no, no, don't send, don't send. He said, no, I have, he said, I have another song. Then I said, no, there's no time to do another song. Then I had a small argument with him. That's the time we had the biggest argument. Then he said, no, no, this is, this. Uh, last night I, 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 I was thinking about this song. I want to do this song. Then uh, I, I, I actually I left the studio. I didn't, I didn't stay. I left the studio. He said, "No, just Rabana Ghalwagi make him meet. We don't have to do too much. Just a Rabana and just uh, something, and we can do this." Then uh, after, uh, after he called me again. Then I went to the studio again. Then uh, that's uh, within a day we did, did that whole thing. He started in the morning by five o'clock, six o'clock. It was done. Then I gave the master also to uh, the producer at about seven o'clock. And that was the song Lanka. Within a within a day, he got the idea. The previous day night, he said he couldn't sleep. He was thinking about this. He wrote the song, came home and wrote the song. We recorded and we finished it also <laughs> the same day, and uh, and that became a huge hit. See, there you go. Yeah. Had you not done that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I think uh, best hits are sometimes made overnight. So yeah, that's a very yeah, some, good example. Yeah, yeah. Even I heard the story by. Uh, uh, even Bob Marley, uh, Redemption song was also si- similar to that. He said his producer wanted uh, uh, 12 songs or something like that. Mm-hmm. He had done 11 and he was he just handed over the 11 songs to the pr- producer. Then the producer said, no, I wanted 12. Then, then he had just gone into the studio, got the guitar. 
then he has, that's why that song has only guitar, that's all he has, we, I mean, we don't have a proper recording of the whole band playing or anything like that. Yeah. But that song became a, one of my favorites of Bob Marley's. Yes. Redemption song, so he has, he plays the guitar and that's all. That's about it, yes. And yeah. there are so many songs like that I've come across as well, like yeah. Richard Marks' uh, yeah. massive hit, Right yeah. Here Waiting, is yeah. also yeah. a song done in just 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he wrote it in yeah. 10, 10 minutes, minutes, literally. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, yes, yeah. there are these interesting yeah. stories yeah. when yeah. it comes now, to musicians. You look at Clarence Vigera then also. Clarence has written so many beautiful, brilliant songs. The Kataragama song, he, he wrote, like, right, they were going to Kataragama while going, before they go in the morning when they were getting ready and everybody shouting, children were going all over the place in the houses, because about 15 people were going to Kataragama. And everybody was shouting, all, and he was in the middle of this, all these things, he, is, he was writing this song, going to Kataragama. Then that was a huge hit. That's that's actually what you think of sometimes. What what your imagination is it just comes onto paper and yeah. then it's yeah, created right. yeah, into yeah. music. It's it's like magic actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, now when I had to, after I came to the studio mm-hmm. now also, you won't believe I was sitting there and I was getting certain lines. So before I came into the studio, you know, we were sitting at the uh, reception there. I took the phone because that's what I always do. I record it onto the phone. Wow. I took the phone. There, was, I just recorded. Two, sometimes for a song, you need the two lines, and from there you can continue. So I got two lines. So I just recorded on. So now when I go home, I'll. It's going to turn yeah, into yeah, a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow! <laughs> so we've got the most talked about track lined up, and this is Oe O Jai. Yeah. <laughs>
nakare na kelle bekke e wage banduna hita mage kar ganna ta e pari mata paya hituna e hari kachakari asa hituna e yuki mihiri na kisi bede samagiya ha sahayoge vetan atare me guna dammatte nagare appa atare ai samagiya nette e gena hita minna biyenna dangave amat raude vadigi nade to radio sri lanka well well now we can very soon expect a different rendition of this uh, famous uh, classic hit i'd yeah. say yeah 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 it should be uh, i mean it should be done in about a month's time it should be out wow that's uh, something people are looking forward to yeah. i presume and obviously you're looking forward to it as well yeah, really because it's it has come out um, i believe it has come out it's up to the people to decide, decide. Uh, what they think but it has come out really nice and uh, being in this industry for a very long time and trying to grow in this industry back in the days is obviously not easy because you no. need to uh, kind of impress the masses as you mentioned you y'all got into singhala music because uh, you wanted to cater to the mass Ma- crowd mass, mass, mass audiences yeah, yeah. so could you also talk about the challenges uh, you have faced as a musician and the strategies uh, you employed to overcome them uh challenges as such i mean the, i mean those days actually when we started music uh the singhala pop music was never uh, allowed i mean uh, actually this whole, in this station the sri lanka broadcasting corporation singhala medium they never allowed uh, they allowed playing uh, pop music there were certain kinds of music but not pop music and most of our songs were not uh, i mean maybe even our lindra lanka sangha my first song uh, they said they some they some excuse they gave and they said this can't be played and uh, like that i mean there were so many obstacles like that but my father was the one who was managing the band and he he is the person for gypsy actually he is the one who started gypsies and uh, what gypsies came up out of whatever gypsies have achieved i mean i mean he's the one who did everything he's the one who got the media going everything so he encouraged us so much and uh, the, the thing is uh, there were so many obstacles like that at the same time uh, uh to come up with different ideas and uh, like coming up with uh, doing these political songs also sometimes it was not that uh, uh easy to face some of the politicians i mean they, they some politicians were uh, got angry and there were instances soon it was threatened also those days so uh there were the obstacles we had but uh, uh with in life i think the obstacles are the main thing that gives you that energy also gives away yeah, to success away. yeah yeah that's only uh, and we always feel that uh, 
these obstacles made us, I mean, people say, I mean, we can't do something and, uh, and they criticize, the more they criticize, the more we get encouraged. It was, it was always like that. So, uh, obstacles are a good thing in life, I think. It is, I yeah. think, and then it makes you learn and yeah. be stronger the next time. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, the loss of uh, Sunil Pereira has also affected big time, I presume. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a huge loss. I mean, I can't explain, like, uh, as a brother, I, I, I miss him so much. Even today, every time we play, uh, I miss him so much. So, but, uh, yeah, so the whole world, it was a shock and, uh, it's a huge, huge loss for the whole world and a person like Sunil, uh, a big person who talks, the, I mean, what he has in mind and who t- t- tells the truth. So, uh, but we had to in the end carry on the, with the band also because I don't think uh, people would have liked if the band had stopped at that time. So that's why I started uh, to, uh, to continue with the band. So still we are, we are doing okay, we are doing quite well with the band. I have got a nice set of young boys now, so, uh, but uh, it was a huge loss, it was a huge loss, Maybe I can't put into words uh, what sort of loss that is, uh, as a brother I miss him even now, today, even now I miss him. I am sure the whole of uh, Sri Lanka yeah, misses yeah, him as yeah, well yeah, in yeah. terms of uh, Baila music and yeah, yeah. Uh, being with the... Uh, I mean, he's captivated many hearts yeah, in yeah, Sri Lanka, yeah. I'd say. And the Gypsies have produced numerous hit songs. Is there any particular song that holds a special place in your heart? Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, Gypsies have produced a lot of uh, special songs. Uh, so I, I can't put my uh, pinpoint one song. But if I if you ask me what's my favorite Gypsy song, mm-hmm. is. Uh, Obba, uh, not that, uh, Obba Langin Ninnam by Sunil, Sunil's, one of Sunil's first love songs. Obba Langin Ninnam, uh, we did in 1972 or 73. Uh, that was a beautiful love song that uh, didn't get popular at that time. Other than that, uh, uh, personally, I like uh, uh, a song I wrote for my daughter for her wedding uh, called uh, Is This a Dream? So, it, uh, Personally, uh, from all my songs, uh, I like that song. And uh, uh, so out of all the Gypsy songs, I mean, for, for these 55 years, I like this song, Obalangan Innam. So I'm sure it's high time uh, we play this as a tribute yeah. to the legend himself. Yeah. Oh, 
into Radio Sri Lanka well uh, so many beautiful comments about that song as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is a lot of people like this song now that's what I say this uh, this never got popular at that time mm. but uh, now, now a lot of people are commenting in, on the, about this song and uh, even Obadutu uh, Muldine never got going at that time in 1970s when Sunil uh, started singing and all that but uh, today, I think uh, that's one of the b- favorite songs of all the Sri Lankans. And actually, when Sunil passed away, the cover versions of that song, I mean, there are millions of cover versions of Obadutu Emuldine. So, uh, I think, uh, uh, to me, uh, those two songs uh, are unique songs of uh, Sunil. Because Sunil didn't sing much, uh, many love songs after that. Those were the first two songs. And after that, he thought... It's not his uh, his area. It's not his area. Yeah, so he, he wanted some yeah, humor in it. Then, then he went to that side. After that, he didn't do Mela. You know, lately, he uh, did a song called Sundara Yadare. Uh, that's all. After that, because Sunil didn't do, do it. After that, it was all fun songs he did. Exactly. But today, people are uh, I'm beginning to appreciate all the love songs he did at that time. I know, yeah, and uh, uh, many people do appreciate yeah, yeah, it. It's yeah, not yeah, just, yeah, I think, yeah, the yeah. band members. Yeah, and yeah. music has evolved in a massive, massive way, technology. Way, massive. Today, yeah. some, oh, I mean, today's music is completely different to what we did. So, But, uh, I, I mean, there are some, a lot of talented musicians in Sri Lanka as well. So, But the music is different, but uh, there's some good music as well. I, I mean, I, I like some of the new stuff as well. Uh, but uh, we still carry on with whatever we we can do and our style we can't because uh, today it's what the youngsters are doing it's not our style so naturally it doesn't come to us mm-hmm. so we still we, people still love the there are, there's a crowd for who loves the old, old our style of baila and all those evergreen stuff. I'd yeah, say yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> evergreen because yeah. I, I'm pretty sure like whenever someone attends a wedding yeah. I mean it doesn't matter yeah. How old they are! Yeah, 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 <laughs> they yeah, dance yeah, to yeah, any kind of yeah, bala music. music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are Sri Lankans, and I think it's there. Yeah, you know, when yeah, you hear something yeah, yeah. bala, People, you but, just get yeah, onto your feet. Yeah, that's the thing. Any wedding or any birthday party, anything, we, Sri Lanka parties doesn't finish without a bala. It doesn't. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't, yeah. and it's not complete. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we've got a very special song lined up uh, to be played as the final song on the show today. So before winding things up. Up, uh, Pial, if you could also tell us uh, or some, you know, message to aspiring musicians out there who wants to form a band, maybe because it's not easy to no. collaborate with many people, and you know, it's it's different to having a solo, yeah. you know, professional career in music, but no. having a band involved, no. it uh, it requires a lot of uh, dedication, dedication, I'd yeah. say. So, yeah. any advice? Yeah, my main advice, uh, I find a lot of bands today. Uh, because they play for a lot of weddings and stuff like that, and there are a lot of gigs they do, and because of that, they keep doing these covers. Of, um, covers means our songs. Now, like our song Gypsies, Clarence, and all these old songs, City Fernando, and that's all they do. The no originality. Okay, that's good. Now, even we play those songs. So, oh, it's good to do those songs because you you need to uh, entertain people and people love those songs. But at the same times, uh, same time, you must try to 
be original and try to come up with your original songs as well rather than just playing all those songs uh, because in the end uh, the, what you have in the end is your original songs only today gypsies are living also because of our original songs so i want i, I want everybody to all these bands at least try doing originals i always tell them whenever i meet all these people uh, band leaders or uh, young musicians i always tell them try to do originals and try to be not doing originals try to be original with the originals because not uh, doing some style that other person has done but try to be more original with your whatever the style of song you do uh, so that was the success of us all. So at the same time, that's what you need. The original, I, uh, I love to listen to original songs by this young music because then only, uh, the, uh, there's a new sound, new, new kind of melody, new kind of lyrics will come out from these young people. There's so a lot of creativity, creativity out there. Yeah, out there. So you, everybody must try to do their own thing and, uh, be creative. So that's a very beautiful piece of advice, I'd say, because it's about making uh, others grow as well. Yeah. It's easy to do a cover. I mean, yeah. it's not yeah. easy. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. need to have the talent, talent but it's yeah. it's about singing another person's yeah. track. But yeah. it's yeah. always good to have your it's own. It's always good to have your own thing. Everybody should try and do their own thing as well, while doing the others also, because in the end, you are entertaining people. You have to do that. But at the same time, try to do your own thing as well. Yes, of course, and I'm sure they heard it well. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Piel Pereira, for being a part of the show. It was an absolute pleasure having yeah. you with us on the yes, coffee. Yeah. It's, I, I enjoyed it as well. Uh, generally, this time of the morning, I never get up. So, so <laughs> today, I had to get up early morning. Not a morning person. <laughs> Not a morning person. No, I don't sleep too late. About 7.38, I get up. But today, I had to get up at about quarter to six so that was a bit too <laughs> <laughs> challenging <laughs> so this is also a very special song isn't it is this a dream yeah this is for my daughter's wedding I uh, I did this song uh, I didn't it didn't take much time actually I, I, I just did it in two, emotions flowing yeah yeah two weeks or something like that I recorded mm-hmm. and finished off and uh, a lot of people like this song because uh, it was a very personal type of personal song for my daughter so we're going to wind things up on Coffee Hour with this beautiful song, Is This a Dream by the Gypsies.